Doug Martin, running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, has been a shell of his former self since that 2015 campaign when he finished second to Adrian Peterson in rushing yards. It is 100% time for both of these guys to officially split off and go in their separate ways. I think they both. I think the Buccaneers need a fresh face at running back, and I think that Doug Martin needs a change of scenery to get back to what he was. He has not been the same player since they have been able to give him a little bit more money, and since he's come back from his suspension, he just never really has looked or really acted like the same guy. He was one of the worst starting running backs in the NFL this year. He's owed $6.75 million. Look, the Bucks do have a lot of cap space, but I think it's time to move on. I think they want to get a little younger at the running back position. So in the past four years, only twice has an NFL running back rushed 100 plus times and averaged less than three yards per carry. That'd be Doug Martin twice. Aye, aye, aye. So yikes. There's Doug Martin there at number five. Number four, we'll stay in Tampa Bay, William Golston. And defensive end here for Tampa Bay, he did not have a good season. He's an okay run defender, but in terms of pass rushing ability, he was awful. Yeah, Set a career low in sacks. Pretty big name coming out of Michigan State a couple years ago for the college football fans that are out there watching. You will definitely recognize his name. But look, since he's coming to the NFL, he really hasn't been that over-the-top outstanding. In fact, I think he's been a pretty decent disappointment. He was really, really bad this year. He came in, I believe, uh, exactly 100th in Pro Football Focus's defensive ranks for DNs. The sacks really haven't been there. The raw statistics haven't really been there. They owe him $7 million next year. I think it's time to go. All right, so there is Golson there for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive end and Tampa Bay, most notably, Dead last yeah. in sacks in the NFL this season. So he's at number four. Number three, Zach Streif missed most of the season due to a torn ACL and MCL. He's mulling retirement. You got Ryan Ramchek really having a fantastic season and had a fantastic season, I should say, at right tackle. So if Streif even came back, he probably wouldn't be the starter. Yeah, it might just be time to move on. I mean, like, like you just said, they already drafted his replacement. And Andrews Pete, you know, while he did go down with that nasty injury, it's time for him to come in. I think what they, if you look at Zach Streif's contract, a lot of the money that he is given is on a game-by-game -game basis. He actually has the highest game day check of any player in the NFL because his game-to-game -game salary, or excuse me, his game-to-game his -game health status is always such a big question mark because of his age. So I think it might be time for them to move on. They have his replacement. It, it sucks because him and Drew Brees are actually really good friends because he's been covering his blind side for so long, but they don't owe him that much money and they can retake back $4.15 million. It might be time for them to move on from Zach Streif. And besides, Ryan Ramchick's pretty good. And you got Armstead as well at the, yes, at the tackle position. So they're doing a fantastic job there. So there is Streif at number three, coming out of New Orleans. Number two, Charles Johnson. Oh, Charles was a healthy scratch in that wild card game against the Saints. Played just 17 of 72 snaps in his return against the Falcons. Was previously suspended for violating the league's PED policy. Harris, is there any reason at all to keep this guy? Uh, the only way you could uh, actually keep him, I think they're going to cut him and then bring him back on a smaller deal. They did just sign him to a small contract back you know, in last March, on March 7th. They signed him to a two-year, $8 million contract. He gets a lot of money in roster bonuses in 2018. He actually gets a million dollars for a roster bonus and then $250,000 for a workout bonus. So if the Panthers don't want to pay him an extra million dollars, they might just cut him pre-June 1st. I think that's what they're going to end up doing. They have a good amount of talent in the DM position. Besides, I think Charles Johnson's best days are behind him already. All right, he's at number two for the Carolina Panthers as a possible cap cut. How about the Atlanta Falcons? Andy Levitre, guard, missed the end of the season with a triceps injury. You got to factor in a possible extension coming for yep. Matt Ryan. Look, Levitre has been consistent for years, but maybe we're starting to see some wear and tear. I think we are, and, and it all kind of comes down to who they're actually paying money to right now. Because if you look at the Atlanta Falcons cap, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Desmond Trufant, Jake Matthews, Alex Mack, Robert Alford. Those are the only players on the team that are getting paid more money than Andy Levitre, and all those guys are really good at their position. Robert Alford, though, didn't really have a great season. Both Andy Levitre, someone has to take the fall in order to get Matt Ryan a little more money. Because right now, his base salary is 19, almost $19.5 million a year. Apparently, that number might jump up to $30 million a year. So that's $11 million. They can cut Levitre and get $7 million back a year. That might be where that money comes from. 
and the Falcons have the 10th worst cap situation right now. So you got to factor that in as well. All right, so those are the possible cap cuts. The notable names out of the NFC South, Doug Martin, William Golston, Zach Streif, Charles Johnson, and Andy Lovitre. 